Those with higher levels of testosterone in the normal physiological range build more muscle, right? At least, that's what seems to be commonly believed. If someone has an impressive physique, people may chalk it up to them having high testosterone. Various proclaimed testosterone-boosting supplements may play on this idea, claiming to boost testosterone and by extension muscle hypertrophy. But is testosterone intrinsically related to muscle hypertrophy? Let's examine the data. Do people with higher testosterone levels build more muscle than people with lower testosterone levels? A study out of the USA helps answer this. Young trained men performed a range of exercises with these variables. Training successfully increased the whole biceps cross-sectional area, as well as slow and fast twitch fiber sizes extracted from the biceps. Resting testosterone levels did not change from the 12 weeks of training. Average levels were around 518 nanograms per deciliter, with a standard deviation of around 172 nanograms per deciliter. This indicates around 68% of the subjects had testosterone levels within the range of 346 nanograms per deciliter to 690 nanograms per deciliter. Yet, no significant correlation between subjects resting testosterone levels and whole biceps, slow twitch fiber, and fast twitch fiber gains were found. That is, those with higher testosterone levels did not consistently see more gains than those with lower testosterone levels. A limitation of the study is only 11 subjects were recruited. Fortunately, another Canadian study recruited 49 trained men and had them train a range of exercises with these variables. Training increased lean mass as well as slow and fast twitch fiber sizes extracted from the vastus lateralis. The researchers actually analyzed the relationship between a range of resting hormones and the hypertrophy measurements through backward elimination regression. Fundamentally, the analysis did not find a relationship between any of the resting hormones and muscle hypertrophy, so that includes testosterone as well as free testosterone. In fact, the coefficients of determination were quite low. In non-statistical lingo, this just indicates little of the muscle hypertrophy could be explained by resting hormone concentrations. So testosterone levels were not predictive of muscle hypertrophy those with higher levels did not necessarily see more gains. Fascinatingly, the researchers divided the subjects into low responders and high responders, and then explored if intramuscular free testosterone differed between them. Intramuscular free testosterone concentration ranged from these levels, and we can see there was no difference in levels between the high and low responders. So those who built the most muscle didn't have greater intramuscular free testosterone levels overall either. A third study from the USA recruited 67 untrained young men and had them train a range of exercises with these variables. After the study, the researchers categorized subjects either as high responders, moderate responders, or low responders based on how much they grew their vastus lateralis. If testosterone was the primary determinant of muscle hypertrophy across people, we'd expect the high responders to have the highest levels. Yet, Average testosterone levels, measured before and after training, were comparable between the low, moderate, and high responders. Here are the individual data points superimposed on the bars. We can clearly see there's no association between testosterone levels and being a low, moderate, or high responder. Each category involves subjects with lower testosterone levels, moderate testosterone levels, and higher testosterone levels. One subject in the highest responder group had relatively low testosterone levels, while a different subject in the lowest responder group had quite high testosterone levels. So higher responders didn't necessarily have greater testosterone levels, and this demonstrates perfectly how factors beyond testosterone levels play a role in muscle hypertrophy across people. I also want to mention a few other interesting things from this dataset. Most subjects did not experience any increase in testosterone from before to after the training period. This is consistent with the majority of the literature, most studies fail to find resistance training increases testosterone levels. We've examined this data in a previous video. However, there were some individuals who did see an increase in testosterone. In fact, some individuals saw some pretty crazy changes, like this one individual in the low responder group, who increased levels from around 750 nanograms per deciliter to above 1,500 nanograms per deciliter, supraphysiological territory. It's not clear if this is due to some measurement error for this person, or if it's actually a real change. If it was a real change, the funny thing is he was still a low responder in the overall study. 
There were other individuals seeing increases in testosterone from before to after training. So maybe this suggests certain individuals can increase their testosterone through resistance training. Yet, confounders still exist. Changes in their lifestyle elsewhere, such as sleep or nutritional factors, could explain the changes and not necessarily the resistance training. Another interesting thing with this data set is there was some individuals who had supra-physiological levels, or at least close to it. One individual in the high responder group had levels close to 2,000 nanograms per deciliter. The subjects of this study were supposed to be natural. It's possible some of them lied, explaining these levels, but it is also possible they are natural and that they are just anomalies. Irrespective of your testosterone levels, consistent training long-term is paramount for making gains. Logging workouts and being mindful of your progress is useful. An alpha progression is a high quality app that can aid this process. Neat graphs can track pretty much any measure long term, such as bench press strength, number of workouts, body weight, and even set numbers per muscle and circumference measures. You can input your own program or explore their custom workout generator. The app has a database of over 450 exercises with great text and video tutorials. The reviews speak to the app's quality, 4.9 stars on Google Play and 4.8 stars on Apple Store. By using the link in the comments and description, you'll have two weeks free of all its features, plus 20% off a yearly or monthly subscription. If you do purchase the app, the House of Hypertrophy will get 50%, so this sincerely helps support these free videos. Thank you. It's crystal clear testosterone is not the primary determinant of muscle hypertrophy across people. Those with high levels of testosterone in the normal physiological range do not necessarily build more muscle. It is very possible for someone with lower testosterone levels to experience greater muscle hypertrophy than someone with higher testosterone levels. This perfectly illustrates how factors beyond testosterone are crucial for the hypertrophy process. Finally, I need to make a technical point. The studies we looked at made comparisons between the different people. Because of this, our conclusions must be specific to this. As I've carefully worded throughout this video, the data proves people with higher testosterone levels do not necessarily build more muscle than people with lower levels. And I also believe the data demonstrates that testosterone is not the primary determinant of muscle hypertrophy across people. However, this data isn't strictly able to tell us what happens if we change a single person's testosterone levels. What I mean is if we get one person who has testosterone levels of say 400 nanograms per deciliter and they manage to increase levels to 800 nanograms per deciliter, would they, as an individual, now build more muscle from training compared to if their levels remained at 400 nanograms per deciliter? Again, the between people comparisons detailed throughout this video cannot truly answer this question. Fortunately, we do have data that can help answer this question. There are studies analyzing how increasing testosterone influences muscle and strength gains when training, as well as gains if no training was performed whatsoever. The insight from these studies is highly interesting and shall be examined in our next video. Nevertheless, the key point from this video is testosterone is simply not the primary determinant of muscle hypertrophy across people. It is very possible for someone with lower testosterone levels to build more muscle than a different person with higher testosterone levels. Finally, I have a free ultimate guide to bench pressing ebook that covers these areas. Feel free to get it in the link in the comments and description.